the Queen has one of the most, if not the most, valuable jewelry collection in the world. A collection that's as storied as the monarchy itself, the Queen owns priceless jewels that have been passed down from generation to generation. And of course, as one of the most recognizable heads of states, she's on the receiving end of some of the world's most extravagant bejeweled gifts. The Queen is also incredibly generous when it comes to lending her collection. Royal women often wear jewels on loan from the monarch to official engagements. Here, we take a look at five brands that have made their way to the Queen's jewelry box over the years. Established in 1735, the House of Gerard has created many iconic and important jewels for the British royal family. The jeweler holds a royal warrant as jewelers, goldsmith, and silversmith, appointed by the Prince of Wales. The house's design has witnessed some of the most monumental royal moments, including then Princess Elizabeth's wedding to Philip Mountbatten in 1947. On her big day, she wore the Queen Mary's Russian fringe tiara, but the tiara snapped just hours before the wedding festivities and had to be brought into Gerard for emergency repair. The diamond fringes can be taken off of its tiara mount and worn as a necklace. But today, the Gerhard name is perhaps most famously associated with the sapphire cluster engagement ring once owned by the late Princess Diana. It's the same ring that Prince William proposed to Kate Middleton with in 2010. The famous ring is actually inspired by a brooch of a similar design that Prince Albert commissioned in 1849 as a something blue present for his then bride, Queen Victoria. The sapphire and diamond cluster Albert brooch remains a favorite of the queens to this day. British royals have long been fans of Cartier. Both Meghan Markle and Kate Middleton wore Cartier pieces on their wedding day. The Cartier halo tiara Kate wore on her wedding day belongs to the Queen. The tiara was in Princess Anne's rotation of diadems in the 1960s. The jeweler played a role in marking the Queen's big day as well. Young Elizabeth received a rough 54.5 carat pink diamond as a wedding present from Canadian gemologist John Thornborn Williamson. The pink stone was cut and polished to 23.6 carat. The Queen then commissioned Cartier to mount the gem. Cartier created a floral mount with 203 white diamonds, setting the pink diamond at the center. The Queen continues to love and wear the Williamson pink diamond brooch today. Another French jeweler that's created a good number of pieces for the British monarchy is Boucheron. One of the most often seen pieces today is the honeycomb tiara on loan from the Queen to the Duchess of Cornwall, Camilla. Most recently, the Queen herself wore the double clip brooch on the 75th anniversary of VE Day at Windsor Castle. The pieces are a part of the royal collection that found their way to the Queen when her parents presented them to her on her 18th birthday in 1944. The crisp blue color of the design comes from baguette-cut aquamarines, which are flanked by white diamonds. The Saudis are known for their love of extravagance, and it seems they're fans of luxury American jewelry house Harry Winston. So much so that both King Faisal and King Khalid have presented the Queen with diamond necklaces from the jeweler. The King Faisal of Saudi Arabia necklace was gifted to the Queen in 1967 during his state visit to the UK. The necklace is set to feature over 300 diamonds, weighing a total of 80 carats. When the Queen visited Saudi Arabia in 1979, King Kali presented her with another Harry Winston diamond necklace. The Queen continues to wear these necklaces today, but they were also favorites of the late Princess Diana, who loved these pieces and often borrowed them to pair with evening wear. And finally, we can't complete this list without mentioning the Queen's appointed jeweler. A name less familiar, but with an important presence, is G. Collins & Sons. The brand's founder and owner, Harry Collins, was appointed as Her Majesty the Queen's jeweler and looks after the Queen's personal collection inside his own workshop at Buckingham Palace. Aside from repairs and maintenance, Collins has also created a number of jewelry pieces for the Queen. One of the most sentimental, perhaps, is a piece commissioned by the Queen herself to commemorate the 100th birthday of the Queen Mother in 2000. The centenary rose brooch features a miniature painting of a pink English rose surrounded by white diamonds. And that's a roundup of the Queen's favorite jewelry brands. If you like this video, be sure to check out our other stories about the royal family. 